guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. I'm back here at Moss Nissan in Newport Ritchie, Florida, because guess what? I've searched high, I've searched low, and I finally have tracked one down. This is a 2020 Nissan Altima, but this is not any ordinary Altima. This is an SR with the VC turbocharger underneath the hood. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the Nissan Altima. The Altima is that midsize car to go up against the Accord, to go up against the Toyota Camry, the Mazda 6, so on and so forth. What's interesting is that this Altima first came about all the way in 1993. That was the first year of the Nissan Altima. I was a junior in high school. For 2020, they definitely have done a job, a good job, with adding some extra power. Now, this redesigned Altima first appeared 2019, but for 2020, they continue it. And now that I finally Thank you. I finally have found the two liter turbocharged version to bring to you. I think the Ultima really is ushering in a new direction for Nissan because let's be honest, for a while, these Nissans have gone unchanged for years and some of them still need to be changed. But one thing is for sure, you look at the new Sentra coming out for 2020, you look at the new Titan and a lot of the other models that are getting redesigned, it's taking some of this new excitement from the Ultima and just gonna spread it all over the place. So let's go ahead, dive into this 2020 Ultima SR, like I said, with the VC turbocharged engine. Right off the bat, this is the design that they went in with that redesign. They made the Ultima almost look more grown up, more aggressive, better body lines. Love what's going on with the headlight housing, especially the size and the way that it angles in to the grill area. You can see the uh, LED daytime running lamps, a little bit of silver trim in there, looks good. We drop down and you have some exterior lighting. One thing I am gonna zonk, even though I think they did a way better job with this new generation Altima, fake vent. That easily could have been something else or maybe nothing at all because if you look, the way that the front fascia angles in, it would have been perfect just to have that be more of that beautiful white paint on the front of the Altima. We have a little bit of a lip spoiler extension on the corners, gives it a little bit more style. And then we come across the front grill. Look at how low the grill design comes. It really gives the whole hood and front fascia a nice slope to it. And it has the V branding. If you look at any Nissan on any dealership, you're gonna get this V shape branding of their grill. I like it, it's easily identifiable. Gloss black, little bit of gloss black on the lower section and that large Nissan logo in there. But from one side to the other, definitely way more 21st century and has some very unique styling to separate it from the rest of the midsize crowd. Now, up on the hood, you have these very strong lines that are prominent and then they fade away. Very nice touch. We come around the bend here and now we're gonna look at our wheel and tire setup for this SR. So you have machined aluminum, some gloss black. If you're wondering, well, what is the actual size of this wheel. This is a 19 inch wheel, 235 on the width, and this sidewall is gonna be a 40 series sidewall. I think it works well with the actual lines of the Ultima. Um, and it's something where it's not a 20. I'm glad that they didn't go up to 20 inch wheels. I think 19 is perfect for this particular vehicle. Now in the fender line area, you can see how strong the line is going down the hole top portion of that upper belt line. I like on the SR, it's got the black mirror caps, flat black around, a little bit of silver trim just along the bottom. This one has a standard style sunroof, and then you'll notice the body line. Here's what's really interesting. A lot of times you see the opposite. I like the way that it's kind of not present and then it pops out and goes along the whole lower sill area. Working our way back, the angular line gives this car a better flow to it. And then I, one of my favorite parts is the floating roof line. This is something that Nissan brought about with the Maxima and they're using it more in a lot of other vehicles. You can see how this blacked out portion of the rear pillar gives that floating roof design, that disconnect in a good way. Same thing that's happening good is the taillight housing. I like the way it's all smoked out. We get to the rear of the Ultima and the taillight housings look great. We come down, we do have a little bit of fake vent. This doesn't have to be there, I'm gonna zonk that. But I do like the darker gray diffuser and you get two 
functioning exhaust tips. One easy way from the back to tell you that this is a turbo, hey, they give you a turbo badge. VC turbo underneath the hood. I like the blacked out SR logo. And the nice, if you notice, it's got a nice trunk lid spoiler extension. It doesn't actually kick up, but it's extended off the back of the Ultima. Let's go ahead, we talked about the exterior. Let's pop the hood and check out that two liter turbocharged engine. All right, guys, we got the hood popped on the 2020 Ultima SR. I am gonna zonk this prop rod. Engine cover's not too bad. It could use just a little bit more, but what's underneath the engine cover is what I'm excited about. That's a two liter inline four turbocharged engine, 248 horsepower, 280 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to a CVT transmission, which I am gonna zonk that. That seems to be the weak link in this whole chain link fence known as Nissan. What it should have is either a seven-speed automatic, the one that they use in the 370Z, or preferably the option for a six-speed manual transmission. Now, the great news is, is that this Ultima weighs in around 3,466 pounds, zero to 60 in 5.8 seconds, quarter mile in 14.5 at 100 miles an hour, and at the end of the day, you're looking at MPGs, 25 in the city, 34 in the highway. This definitely puts it within competition reach of the Honda Accord Sport 1.5 or the two liter turbo and also the Camry with the V6. But why don't we go ahead, fire up this Ultima and see what it sounds like. All right, guys, we're in the Nissan Ultima SR with the turbo. I know I seem a little excited. A lot of it has to do with just finding one of these finally to bring to you guys. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, with this extra performance, there's definitely gotta be an extra price. MSRP on this particular one is around $31,900. That puts it right in alignment with the Honda Accord Sports and also the Toyota Camry with the V6. But let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Now, I do like the direction that Nissan has gone with the door panel. The soft material on the armrest, I like the contrast stitching, that orange contrast stitching. What I am gonna zonk is that faux carbon fiber. I feel like that's almost like a cop-out when it comes to styling, and I wish they would've put some silver trim, like brushed aluminum would've looked perfect. Even if it was plastic, would've looked perfect. Now, as we go from the door panel to the dash, that same soft material, here is that orange stitching. See how the silver here, if they would've put that on the door panel where the faux carbon fiber was, it would've been a home run. Soft material all the way around, you do have an eight inch uh, infotainment system screen, touch screen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Uh, this one also has navigation as well. Silver trim looks really, really great. We drop down. This one does not have dual climate control. So at $31,000, that to me is a Zonk. It has your standard AC controls, which they work fine uh, and all that. Heated seats, no ventilated seats. You got a little cubby for Tootsie Rolls, 12 volt. USB, a USB-C, and an aux jack. So technology-wise, they got you covered. Two cup holders with some of that, fo some more of that faux carbon fiber. I do like the start-stop button, very classy. It's that silver finish, it makes it so much nicer. Silver on the shifter, some leather, or leather-style material. You have the boot here with the orange stitching. This is gonna control that CVT transmission. What's interesting is that they did not update the design of the key fob, so they did a great job on the car, but this key fob feels like it's back from 1991. So um, if 91 calls, I'm gonna give them their key fob bag. So I, I hope Nissan does something with that. Nice little cubby here for breath mint. So if you're about to kick, you know, pick up your uh, blind date or your girlfriend, pop a mint, it'll make your life that much better. I do like, look at how they brought the nice soft material on the edges, of course, on both sides with the stitch work. Same thing with the armrest, nicely padded. Open her up, you got a little nice felt line tray for some diamonds. And then the rest of this area is all open. There's no other connectivity, but you definitely could probably house about 20 Twinkies in there and not get any smush, which nobody likes a smush Twinkie. Fold that down seats. Like the design, it's a cloth material in the center with that orange design to kind of tie it all in. If you notice on the sides here, you are gonna have manual controls for the passenger, but I'm telling you right now, these seats are very, very comfortable. I could drive this car for a very long time, I could feel it. I could just feel it sitting here. That's how good I am. Sunroof, standard sunroof, would be nice to have a panoramic, but 
thirty-one thousand dollars. I I don't want to I don't want to nitpick too much, but why don't you get on over behind the wheel of this Altima so I can show you the business end. All right, guys, business time. I want to show you something over here. I'm gonna have Tom kind of show off what's going now. Very small pockets. If you try to put a Twinkie in there, it's gonna explode. So please don't do that. Here's something that's funny though. They tell you that this is for bottles. Don't put a, a cup or a coffee cup or anything like that. Then you're really gonna have problems. I, I almost wish like I had a cup right now just so I could violate that. The heck with that. Tell me I can't put a cup there. But what's nice is electric assist controls, very easy to use. And then one thing that always surprises me, even though I know it's coming, the steering wheels, they look like it's out of a out of a Nissan 370Z. I don't even know if the Nissan 370Z wheel looks this good. Flat bottom, very thin, the nice brushed aluminum plastic, flat black on the buttons. You do have paddles to go up and down, simulated gears in that CVT uh, non-gear box. It's, remember, just belts, no gears. Instrumentation, though, is clear as a whistle. Um, you have an analog tack, analog speedometer. That's a seven inch digital display in the center that you could toggle through a plethora of information, which is really, really great. And super clear graphics. I even like the way, look, it's, it's all in the touches. You see how they brought that soft material on the hood here for your instrumentation with the stitch work. Plenty of headroom, plenty of shoulder room. I really love these seats. It's almost like I wanna take one home with me and use it in my living room. But why don't we go ahead, check out the backseat area and see how your passenger is gonna be like in this Altima. All right, guys, one thing is for sure, with this Altima, remember the new Altima, it's wider, it's longer, the wheelbase is longer. That allows so much more room here. If you notice, you got the nice soft material leather all the way around, large pockets. You could put a bag of Lays in there without them getting squished. So that's a big plus. No rear AC, so that is a zonk. Even at $31,000, I need to have rear AC. You do get a USB-C and a USB and a pocket for both sides. So you don't have to fight over your pockets. Headroom is great. Getting in and out was easy. Armrest, let's check it out. Ooh, I can tell you it's already soft. Soft as could be, two, cu two cup holders, ready to rock and roll. Let's check out that trunk area and see how usable this Ultima is. All right, guys, time to check out what kind of junk can we put in the trunk of an Ultima. Surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, lots of usable space. This is why I say you don't necessarily have to go SUV. You could have that better driving experience that you get from a car rather than an SUV. One thing that's a little concerning is the opening is not as wide as I would like to see as compared to some of the competitors, but once you get it past that, you pull these nicely engineered tabs. The seats are gonna do a 60-40 split. But let's get to the best part. If you're ready, I'm definitely ready. Let's take this Ultima Turbo for a spin. All right, guys, we're in the 2020 Nissan Ultima SR. As you can see, the environment has changed here in sunny Florida. It's not very sunny right now. Um, we are going to uh, wait to wrap up the video, but we are here to review and let's do the drive in the rain. I, I know some of you guys can appreciate that. Um, when we are reviewing, you wanna see how the car drives in wet conditions. One thing I've noticed right away, even with driving in the parking lot, is this two liter turbocharged engine, much more responsive. I felt like the 2.5 was definitely a little bit of a slug, whereas this, you have over 240 horsepower and it definitely feels it, even at slow speed. But just like the other Ultima reviews, uh, overall the interior is night and day difference compared to the previous generation. And definitely since 1993, there's been some major changes going on. I do like with that seven inch digital display in between your two analog gauges, when you turn on the windshield wipers, it actually tells you what mode you're in visually. So you don't have to actually look at the stock, which is really, really nice. Visibility out the back window. It's interesting because What's causing some poor visibility is the massive third brake light housing. The housing for that um, is on the larger side and hurts visibility, uh, but definitely out the front looks great. Your side mirrors, although outside they're attractive, on the inside they're a little on the small side. Uh, so I am gonna zonk the visibility factor in here a little bit, but I do like the fit and finish everywhere. Um, steering has a little light feel to it. I wish it, there was a little bit more weight to the steering, but other than that, very, very comfortable for sure. And definitely a big advantage over the previous generation. All right, guys, obviously we're gonna be a little hampered 
with uh, wet roads, but I'm gonna get on throttle, the CBT, a little bit of wheel spin, but other than that, CBT doing its thing at a loud RPM, but definitely has so much, the acceleration is so much greater than the 2.5. Even with the damp road, I'm still getting pretty good feedback to the wheel. Is it as precise as a Honda Accord? No, not even the Camry is on point. This would fall closer to the Camry than to the Honda Accord for overall feel in the wheel. I like the style of it though. Like I said, it looks like it belongs in a GTR um, rather than in a Nissan Altima, but definitely smooth, comfortable ride. The blind spot monitoring is actually brought into the cabin instead of being on the mirror, which is a nice touch as well. On the brakes, I'm not gonna go too hard because of the wet roads, but still nice. I'm gonna go ahead and get on throttle. It actually gets traction down really nicely, even with the wetter roads. You do get a, a little bit more of aggressive sound coming into the cabin with the turbocharged two liter compared to the naturally aspirated 2.5. This infotainment system screen, I know a lot of people are hating on the iPad style. I think it's properly placed and it's nicely supportive. You know, some there's some manufacturers, you touch the screen, you feel like you're gonna just knock it off with a flick of a finger, but uh, I'm liking the overall placement of it, which is nice. It's just, it's a little tight on the back window area and the side mirrors, like I said, are small. Padding for your elbows on the armrest is, is on point. I really like the texture of the materials and whatnot. It doesn't feel rental car-ish, and that, that's a great thing, because there are some other Nissan products that still haven't gone through the full redesign yet that feel like a rental car. And definitely these seats, uh, I'm loving them. They're, they're very nice and comfortable and supportive all at the same time. At a slow roll, I'm gonna get on throttle Takes a second, you can hear the high RPM, this, this, the synthetic gears, simulated gears, I should say. But I tell you, you get up to speed in this thing, brake feedback is amazing. Really impressed with the brake feedback. Like I said, with the wet roads, it's a little hard to really push it to the, to the max, but just trying to give you guys an overall feel. The two liter turbo is really the way to go. Even if you're not looking for super performance and you just want a fat, you know, something that's gonna get up and go as a daily driver, this really um, is a lot better than the 2.5. Well, actually, I'm liking the way it handles in the rain, to be honest with you. Very composed, it really evokes confidence, which is what you want. Super smooth, it rides great over the bumps. Uh, and this road is not exactly the smoothest, but really soaks up the bumps well. Compliant ride, not a ton of body roll, uh, which is great as well. It would be awesome if they made a Nismo version of this with this engine all wheel drive and a manual. I would be ready to rock and roll and, and definitely drive that for sure. Look at that, it, it held a line on that wet there. Really awesome. All right guys, one more time. I'm gonna use the paddles this whole time, go through those simulated gears. Second gear or second simulated gear. Third, fourth, much faster acceleration than just standard automatic. Here we go. Oh, look at this, this handle's great. Out of the turn. The boost comes in very, very low in the RPM range. And I'm telling you, once you get straight road, this thing is quick. It really is. It's very deceiving. I'm liking the sound from the engine. It's it's nothing too buzzy or annoying and nothing too loud, but it has some different sound than the 2.5. Look at this. The simulated gear is very nice. I'm in second. Rolling on throttle, a little bit of traction loss, but it then gets it down. On the brakes, obviously I'm moving my braking markers just a little bit into this right hand bend. Well, the great news is, is that 
being able to showcase this car in the rain allows you to see that, hey, you could be confident while driving it, even in bad weather conditions. The bad news is I'm not able to push it uh, a little bit harder and really showcase the balance of the chassis and everything on dry pavement. But I think that, you know, like I said, for a review in the rain, this thing really showed that it can be very capable and keep you safe. Cause that's another thing, you know, you're gonna obviously get Nissan's great uh, sensing technology with their emergency braking, lane keep assist and all that. You're riding on a, a great platform that's gonna keep you and your family safe and get you to your destination. Wish it had a little bit more weight in the steering wheel. But I'm telling you, the, th the car wakes up using the paddles. Whenever you're driving quick in the rain, you just have to adjust where your braking markers are, how you're turning in, staying off of painted lines and all that. I tell you, this thing gets up and goes. It, like I said, it's very deceiving. It builds up steam very quickly. And I, I'm quite impressed with the traction control system in here. It allows you to accelerate and it'll protect you from losing grip, but it doesn't like just kill you on throttle like some other traction control systems. Look at this, this is great. I just wish this thing had a seven speed automatic or even better, the six speed manual. This thing would be a blast. It really would for a sedan and really be even more in alignment with the Accord Sport because remember the Accord Sport, you can get with a six speed manual. It's the only one out of the bunch. We're gonna go ahead and get back to Moss Nissan and wrap this up, so I will see you in a split second. All right, guys, another wonderful day here at Moss Nissan. Definitely got to thank Dave Jr., Christian, the rest of the crew, getting us not only a 2020 Ultima, but finally an SR with the turbocharged engine. Definitely helped improve the drive of this vehicle. Do you go this route? Do you go Accord? Do you go Toyota? You really need to get behind the wheel of each one and find out the perfect one for your likes, dislikes, and lifestyle when it comes to driving and what you need out of a car. But if these are the types of cars that you want to keep seeing on Radius Rise, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radius Rise merch. Got to give it up to Big Guns McGee, Tom Motioner, working the camera. Check him out on Instagram, at Mosh Photos. He loves babies. He's got lots of baby pictures there. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.